when I was 13 years old, my father left on a business trip. Six months. That's how long he said he needed to complete his project. He dragged that on for 12 years until his death, and I never spent longer than two weeks at a time with him again. He dragged my self-esteem with him to that faraway place. What started out as why did he go very quickly became why wasn't I good enough for him to stay. Within weeks of him leaving, I got my first boyfriend. Coincidence? Then we broke up and I got another one, and the cycle was born. I just wanted attention so desperately. There was this huge void in my life. I wanted somebody to love me again, so I figured I could get boys to do it. I dolled myself up. I stuffed my bra. I rolled up the top of my skirt so that I could make it shorter. There I was, this young girl, showing off my toilet paper assisted chest, flying through this revolving door of boundaryless, codependent, completely dysfunctional dating until I crash landed into an abusive relationship in my early 20s, laying face down in a pile of rocks, pushed there by the person I loved most in the world. I decided enough was enough. I began the healing process I now walk women through as a mentor almost two decades later. The calling on my life is to be the voice I so desperately needed to hear so that you can have a wake-up call much sooner and with far fewer casualties than I did. So I'm asking, are you stuck repeating unhealthy and exhausting cycles in your relationships? Are you trapped in a pattern that leaves you broke and brokenhearted when your relationships inevitably end. Maybe professionally there was big progress, but love continued to be a source of stress, disappointment, frustration, and fear. That's really common for women with unhealthy relationships with their fathers. It's not because healthy love is for other people. It's not because you're not willing to do the work. It's possible you're hearing this message having experienced yet another year of disappointing and painful romantic interactions after putting in lots of hard personal development work. How can that be? How can we make it stop? I've dedicated my career to helping answer those questions for us. My name is Shade Yashani. I'm an author, speaker, researcher, mentor. I graduated from Columbia University and earned my master's in public health to study this link further. I wanted to understand how absent and abusive fathers show up in their daughter's future relationships. What I found was that there is an absolute, undeniable tie between fathers and the imprint that they leave on their daughter's future relationships with love, money, and with that woman in the mirror. I interviewed 315 women looking for the link. And as these conversations developed, larger themes and trends began to emerge early onset puberty, depression, unworthiness, shame, exposure to domestic violence, and anxiety, crippling anxiety that love would continue to evade them. I saw how fathers leave an imprint on their daughters' lives that has to be reckoned with one way or another. I saw that fathers express their daughter's value to them with their presence and consistent provision. These are the six most common ways that I saw fathers uh, show up in their daughter's wounding. One was they become codependent saviors. They need a partner to save or rescue in order to feel worthy enough to receive love in return. Second was by becoming vengeful. They are angry or afraid of men and they take that out on them in order to exact revenge um, for the broken little girl inside. Third is by merging. Do you know anybody who becomes almost a totally different person depending on who they're dating? That's called merging. When you change your hairstyle, your clothes, your lifestyle, your hobbies, your religion, in order to be lovable. Mergers are chameleons in deep pain who learned how to read the room in order to survive. Fourth is by becoming commitment crazed. 
these women believe that their worthiness is waiting for them at the end of the aisle and at the altar and not a moment before. They want to secure their worthiness by being married. Unfortunately, they look for commitment from almost completely emotionally unavailable people in order to replay the wound set by their fathers. Fifth is by becoming a revolving door of dating. These women haven't been single since the sixth grade. They can't slow down. They take almost no time off between relationships. They often date multiple people at the same time. If they're old enough, they might have been married multiple times. They keep moving, keep swiping right, keep trying. Because if they slow down, then they'll be stunned by the pain of loneliness that feels way too much like the abandonment they knew as young girls. And lastly, is by shutting down almost entirely. (sighs) Too much pain over too many years, too much heartbreak. This can often be a response to a deep betrayal, like finding out the love of your life is living a double life. I learned two very valuable lessons that I've shared with women in colleges and conferences across the country, and I'm excited to share them with you today. Number one is that all of us are building our adult lives on the blueprints of our childhoods. Unless and until we reckon with that, we will enroll people into our childhood stories to replay and we recreate them. We will pick people who remind us of our primary caregivers so we can reconcile the storyline. We want to get it right this time. What many of us experience as attraction or chemistry is actually attraction to the original wound. We pick people who we know we can replay our trauma with. The attraction that we feel is actually the hope that we will actually get to heal the original wound inflicted by dad. Second is that women who have been abandoned, abused, or neglected by their fathers struggle to believe they are worthy of healthy love. They recognize that cry of my heart that I shared with you when we first began our time together. Why wasn't I good enough for my father to stay? In response, to quote the ever-brilliant Dr. Brene Brown, they begin hustling for their worthiness. They become desperately busy, striving to be chosen, trying to figure out, what do I have to do? Who do I have to be in order for my dad to love me? I'll do anything. They try to figure out how to get him to stay sober this time how to get him not to hit their mom this time, how to get him to show up to their ballet recital, to their graduation, to their lives. They have spent their time trying to figure out how to earn love from their father so they haven't spent any time learning how to cultivate authentic identity. Is it any wonder then that they struggle to find an appropriate match to an unknown identity. This original dynamic set by dad then replays again and again and again until they're willing to see it for what it is, the only story they've known how to tell about love. So if we are ready to write a new story, then it's time to accept responsibility. If your romantic history is a series of disasters, you are the common denominator. So scanning for red flags in the person sitting across the dinner date table from you proves futile because women who are unhealed often ignore red flags anyway. Let's be honest, ladies. It's time to start looking for your own red flags. Did you hear pieces of your patterns? in the father wound responses? Are you teaching, coaching, helping, healing your partners? Are you picking immature people who you have to do everything for? Or are you trying to mother your partners to their greatness, falling in love with potential? Or are you angry, disappointed with men, taking it out on them by being unfaithful or being the one to leave first? If so, then you may be dating from your childhood blueprint. I'm here to encourage you to know that you can take a step back from your childhood blueprint. First, by asking yourself and meeting someone new. I don't know if 
feeling those sparkly butterfly, can't wait till next time feelings. Get really honest. Am I falling in love with the person sitting in front of me right here, right now, or am I falling in love with potential that doesn't exist? Am I falling in love or am I trying to reconcile my trauma with somebody who reminds me of my dad? Because my answer was always the latter until I came to understand myself as a codependent savior who needed a partner to rescue in order to feel love. I'm here to encourage you that there is hope, that it doesn't have to stay that way. I'm here to encourage you to stop falling in love with potential in others and see the potential in yourself. To heal, to know wholeness, to let go of the pain of the past, to be the one your ancestors prayed for, to break the cycle, to be bold and brave enough to look at the ways you are replaying your childhood patterns in your adult life and let go. Only then can you stop sabotaging your brilliant future by picking people to replay the past with. To my fellow father-wounded daughters, may we always remember that we can have so much more than a life of trying to survive violence against ourselves. We were born lovable and worthy to be loved. Nothing and no one has ever changed that truth. Thank you. <laughs>